So our goal in this video is going to be to look at how do we graph radical functions, what do they look like, what happens with transformations, all about the domain and the range, kind of the same thing we've done with when we talked about quadratics and we talked about cubics and we talked about all these other types of functions. We're going to apply that same concept and we're going to do it with square root functions and cube root functions. All right, so let's start off with square root functions. And if we wanted to see what the parent function looks like, remember our, kind of our goal with a lot of these functions is to kind of get a good shape right for what the function should look like because we know all square root functions will look the same all cube root functions will look the same so we start off with the very simplest function we can find which is this one y is equal to the square root of x and so if we make ourselves a little table here we actually run into an issue right away that we need to start thinking about right and so our issue becomes i can't plug whatever i want in for x right i can't plug in for example, I could plug in a 0, so let's start with that one. I can plug in 0, and this says, what is the square root of 0? Well, the answer is, well, it's 0. Right? So I can put a point on my graph. Right? Let me use a different color. 0, comma 0. There it is. Okay? And so let's try our next one. I could plug in 1, and if I take the square root of 1, I get 1. So let's graph that one. Okay. And now it's, we're getting to the point where it's like, what is the square root of 2? And well, that, we can graph that one if we wanted to. If the square root of 2 is like, you know, 1.3 or 1.4, but that's really not a nice number, so I'm going to skip that one. The square root of 3, same thing, it's like 1.7 or 1.8, kind of not really a nice number to put on a coordinate plane, so I'm going to skip it. But then once I get to 4, I can graph that one, square root of 4, very nicely, comes out to be 2. And again, I'm going to skip a bunch of x values because they're not really nice numbers to graph, right? So I'm going to skip all my way all the way up to 9 because the square root of 9 is 3. So let's graph these ones and let's see what, what happens with them, right? 4, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 2, okay? And 9 goes up to 3. And again, we could keep going. I could put, I'd go all the way over here to 16 and that would go up to 4, right? And so that's kind of a good shape for our graph. We're starting to see something come out of that. And so we have to think about, well, I really only plugged in positive numbers. Is there anything else I could plug in? Right? And here's where that big issue comes in. We can't plug in any negative numbers at all, right? Even nice ones that would square root, like negative 1 or negative 4, right? Those, those ones come out with answers that involve complex numbers, right? I starts getting involved. And we don't we can't put those onto this coordinate plane. So really we have to to look at our domain and range and say there's actually a, a small group of numbers that could be input. In this case it looks like only positive numbers. So remember I could put in two or three, I could put in five or six or seven or eight. I purposely skipped those ones because they're not going to give me really nice output values, right? But I could plug those in, right? I know what the square root of five is. It's a little bit bigger than two, right? Two point something, two point three, right? Um, but I'm not going to plug put put those ones in. But I actually can't plug in any negative numbers at all because if I plug in what is the square root of negative nine, the answer is well, you get no real numbers out of that. It doesn't work. So this is really as far as I can go down. I can't go down or to the left, or I start getting into an area that is undefined. So this is my graph. Okay. As nicely as I can sketch it, it's just going to look like that. It's kind of a, you know, if, if we could pr pretend like there's the, the bottom half, right? Okay, this looks kind of like a parabola on its side, but we can't graph any of the negative ones, so we're not actually going to see those. This is actually going to go away and just look like that. right? So this kind of half U shape is my parent function. Okay, so if I looked at this picture and said, what is the domain of the parent function? What am I allowed to substitute in? We're going to say that the domain really consists only of x values that are greater than 0. I was also able to plug in 0, so I'm going to say greater than or equal to 0. Okay, and then if we look at the range and say, what values came out of this? I didn't get any negative numbers at all. When I square rooted 9, I got 3. That's it. Right? So I'm going to say in this case, the range is also only the y values that are greater than or equal to 0. Okay. So I'm asking another question here. Are there any x or y intercepts? And in this case, I do actually have an x intercept and a y intercept. I'm going to say for both, okay, they're, they're, it, in this case it's 0, comma 0. Okay. But you could see that if I were able to take if I was able to take all of these points, let's see if I can do it real quick. If I was able to take all these points, uh, it took my whole thing, okay, and I was able to slide them up. It's very possible that I might have neither x intercepts or y intercepts if I move this off of the axis. It's, there's going to be situations where there are no x-intercepts and there are no y-intercepts, right? So let's take this idea and, and apply it, right? So to graph a radical function, we really need to think about what values can I even plug in so that underneath the radical, 
it's going to stay positive, right? So we have to be very specific about the values that we choose. We also want to try to be careful about picking values that will give me a nice output back, right? We don't have to, but it's going to make our life a lot easier. So let's make ourselves another XY table, okay? And let's think about what values I could plug in for X that not only will give me an output point, but will also kind of give me something nice to square root, right? So let's start off with underneath the radical. This says x plus 3 under the radical, which means that this expression, x plus 3, has to be greater than or equal to 0. I can't have this expression, x plus 3, ever be negative because I can't square root those values. So here's where we're going to end up. Okay, I'm going to say x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. This means if I subtract 3 on both sides, that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 3. So let me put that down, negative 3. If I plug in a negative 3 here, I get square root of 0. All right, square root of 0 is 0. Minus 5, I got a negative 5 to come out. So that was a nice value. Okay? And so if you take a look at my, my previous table, all right, I, it looks like I went up by 1, and then I went up to 4, and then I went up to 9. So I want the number after uh, the number underneath the radical to be one of those. So we're going to do the same thing and say, how can I turn this expression into a 1? Because I can square root 1. Well, if I plugged in just a negative 2 right here, let's do that. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. The square root of 1 is 1. Minus 5 is negative 4. That's a good one, right? And then the next value, perfect square, that I would like to be under the radical, it's like 4 would be a good value, right? So what would I have to plug in right here to get a 4? All right, well, I have to think about that one a little bit more. It looks like if I plugged in a 7, I'm sorry, not a 7, if I plugged in a 1 right here, 1 plus 3 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 minus 5 is negative 2, so that works. So I'm going to plug in a 1, right? So I'm being very, very... Uh, careful about the values that I'm choosing uh, and to get my expressions back. And then my last one I'm going to plug in is, remember, we had a 9 here. Well, what would give me a 9 if I plugged it in? In this case, 6 plus 3 gives me a 9. So if I plug in a 6, I will get a 9 back. The square root of 9 is 3. 3 minus 5 looks like negative 2. So if I graph this now, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and then down 5, okay, that's a point. Negative 2, and then we're going to go down 4. Positive 1, and then I'm going to go down 3, and positive 6, and I'm going to go down 2. Okay? So if you notice, I'm getting that same shape, that like half a U shape is coming out of this one. But instead of it starting at the origin, it's starting way down here. It looks like at negative 3, negative 5. So if I ask you what the domain of this one is, it looks like the x values now start kind of right here, and they cut off when they get to this point where x is... 3 or negative 3. So I'm going to say x can be greater than or equal to negative 3. It looks like it stops. It never goes to the, neg the negative 4s or negative 5s. Right, so that's my domain. Okay? And then my range, it's going to be the same thing. It kind of cuts off right here right, where my 5 is. Okay? So I'm going to say my range are the y values that are greater than or equal to negative 5. Okay? And so now I can start talking about the transformations on the parent function. It looks like my, from my original 0, 0, I moved to the left by 3, okay? left by 3, and I moved down by 5. Okay? And that makes a whole lot of sense because if you remember, we have B or C values on the inside that talk about left and right movements, and I have D values on the outside that talk about up and down movements, and that's exactly what we're seeing happening, kind of graphing it the old-fashioned way. Right? So let's take a look at one more. Okay, and see what happens with this one. We'll move a little bit more quickly through this one. So we're going to say x minus 1 is my domain. That's got to be greater than or equal. x minus 1 is underneath my radical. And so to find the domain, this has to be greater than or equal to 0. So that means that x has to be greater than or equal to 1. So if I find my xy table, which I don't really have a lot of space for that. Let's put it down here. Okay, my xy table here, okay, I'm going to start at 1, because I know when I plug in 1, I'm going to get a 0 back. When I plug in 1, I get a 3 to come out, which again, I'll let you do. So then remember, the next value that I'd like to be underneath the radical is 1, and it looks like if I plug in a 2, right, that would work, right? So 2, okay, and then I can say the square root of 1 plus 3 is going to be 4, okay? And then if I want my next value here to be a 4, it looks like I'd have to plug in a 5 for x, okay? That would be 2 plus 3, which is 5, and then if I plug in a 10, 10 minus 1 would give me a 9 under the radical. The square root of 9 okay, is um, 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. Okay? 
So I just noticed something, and that's that this little negative sign was hanging out here. So let's make a quick adjustment on our values. Okay, I'm going to change my output values here. Okay, so it looks like this is going to become 0 plus 3, which is still 3. Okay, this is going to become 1, negative 1 plus 3, which is 2. Okay, this is going to become negative 2 plus 3, which is 1. And this is going to become negative 3 plus 3, which is 0. So watch out for that. I missed the negative sign. Very common thing. So let's graph this one. This is actually really important, having that negative sign out there. If I put, go to 1, 3, okay, there it is, 2, 2, okay, 5, 1, and 10, 0, okay, look at what I'm getting. I'm getting kind of an upside down version of the, that's like the bottom half of the U now instead of the top half. So if I talk about my domain here, it looks like X is greater than or equal to 1, right? It's still starting at 1. This is my cutoff line, right, where X is 1, and it never goes to the left of that. But in this case, it looks like the cutoff for my Y's, for my range, are the things that are smaller than 3, right? So in this case, X is, I'm sorry, Y, Y is less than or equal to 3 now. Remember, for like our last one, it was greater than or equal to 5, and now it is less than or equal to 3, and that is because of this negative sign. Again, think back to transformations. That negative sign does a reflection. So reflection means now it's going to head down instead of heading up. So if I talk about my transformations here, I'm going to say there are three of them. Okay, I move to the right by 1. Okay. Remember, I was at the origin, so I moved to the right by 1. I moved up by 3. That was my d value, and I did a reflection over the x-axis. Okay, so we have three transformations happening in order to get my uh, graph of the square root of the negative square root of x minus one plus three.